Hi everyone. Today we're going to be comparing different sorts of motors. We're going to be looking at uh, a lot of the disadvantages and advantages of using various different AC and DC motors and trying to figure out what each one is best for. So we've now covered quite a few different sorts of motors. Let's see if you can remember them all. We started off with DC motors and more recently we've covered AC brushed motors universal motors, which can run on AC or DC power, and induction motors, or squirrel cage motors. So how do they compare with one another? We know about the construction and the uses of all of them, but we haven't really compared them side to side yet. So let's do that now. The induction motor has a great advantage over all of the other motors. So why would this be? Well, it lasts longer than all the others. The brushes of all the brushed motors, that is, standard AC motors, DC motors, and universal motors, will wear down over time. In this photograph, we have on the left uh, a new brush for a motor, and on the right, a worn out brush. So we can see that we are definitely going to need to replace those brushes. The thing is, an induction motor doesn't have any brushes. It causes the rotor to rotate without any contact between the stator and the rotor. This means that it will last longer. So the current in an induction motor is fed into the stator, and it makes it a more robust and reliable form of motor. Right? It doesn't fail quite as easily, because it's easier to break the brushes or to wear them down. So the only parts of uh, the induction motor that wear down over time are the bearings on the rotor. So that's the part connecting the rotor to the stator and allowing it to spin. There are no brushes involved, it's usually things like ball bearings. Now the rotational speed uh, of induction and AC motors is hard to change which means that in terms of which motor is best for variable speed, these ones aren't great. In fact, the best way to get a motor with a variable speed uh, is not these at all, because they will always rotate at exactly 50 hertz. Instead, we want a DC motor, right? If we have a DC motor, then we can theoretically run them at any speed. The rate that at which a DC motor spins is not dependent on the input frequency in the same way that induction motors and standard AC motors are dependent on the input frequency. Right? For a DC motor, we have a constant supply. We don't have a supply that varies with time. So we can pretty much pick any speed we want. So in terms of variables, variable speed, the best sort of motor is the DC motor. What about having a maximum speed? What's the fastest we can get a motor to run? Well, once again, AC motors are limited because they always try to spin at the same rate as the input frequency. We can slow them down a bit, of course, by connecting them to a heavy load, but we can't speed them up in the same way. A DC motor, on the other hand, does not depend on the input voltage frequency because the frequency doesn't exist. The input voltage is constant. So this means that it will have the potential to rotate much, much faster than any of these AC motors. What about load handling? How heavy a load can the various different motors handle? Well, the induction motor is very, very good at handling loads, especially compared to the AC brushed motor. Now, when the induction motor is operating just below its normal speed, it actually produces a greater torque than if it's closer to its maximum speed. So the heavier the load, and the more the motor is slowed down, the harder the motor will push the load. This makes it uh, very fast to start up before you put a load on it, and very good at handling heavy loads, much better at handling heavy loads than, for example, uh, standard AC motors or universal motors 
both of which will slow down significantly when faced with a heavy load. How about eddy current losses? Remember that eddy currents are inevitably a part of loss when we run a motor. So induction motors uh, once again come out on top. Uh, they lose less energy to eddy currents than other motors do. So what would this be? Well, we know that when other motors are rotating, they're always passing through a magnetic field, right? But when an AC motor, uh, an AC induction motor is spinning, it's passing through the magnetic field very slowly, right? It's always trying to catch up to that rotating magnetic field. So when the motor is in normal operation, in fact, and it's not carrying a load, there is almost no change in the magnetic field relative to the turning coil. And if we have no change in magnetic field, that means no eddy currents. But this is not true of AC or DC motors that use brushes. In this case, the coil will always be passing through a magnetic field and always uh, be producing eddy currents. Let's look at the power requirements of different sorts of motors. In the last two uh, things that we've been comparing motors on, the AC induction motor always seems to come out on top. Not so for power required. If we have a three-phase motor running on AC power, then it will use up a lot of energy. The reason for this is because it needs to split a single uh, AC power source into three different ones, all slightly out of phase with each other, because the electromagnets in the stator need to activate at different times. right? It produces a rotating magnetic field with different electromagnets. So those electromagnets need to be going off in sequence. So in order to make this happen, we need to use capacitors. The capacitors tend to be uh, very expensive and very inefficient. So this means that they waste a lot of energy. So if we want power to be uh, put into an AC induction motor, we need to put in enough power that the energy lost by the capacitors doesn't significantly affect the operation of the motor. And as a result of this, most domestic motors, that is most motors that we use in the home, are either going to be AC or DC brushed motors. So these motors won't require huge amounts of power and they don't require three phase AC signals. They require either a single AC signal or a DC signal. So AC and DC motors both have their uses as well. Induction motors aren't perfect. Now electric trains are one important use of DC motors. They use DC motors in order to turn the wheels of the train because this means that they can control their wheels at variable speeds. It doesn't always have to be a constant speed like an AC motor needs. If we look at high power industrial motors, then we generally tend to use uh, AC induction motors because we have a lot of power to spend and we often need to turn very large loads. Power tools and other domestic appliances that we might use at home will use either AC or DC motors because these uh, require only a low amount of power. So that's the end of the theory. We've compared various different types of motors, including standard AC motors, DC motors, and AC induction motors. Let's go on to some questions. Question 11. Which motor loses the least energy due to eddy currents? Is it the standard AC motor, the AC induction motor, the DC motor, or the universal motor? Remember that eddy currents are produced by moving a conductor quite quickly uh, close to a magnetic field. Now in AC induction motors, DC motors and universal motors, this is going to be a problem. Uh, but in induction motors, the squirrel cage rotor is going to be turning at the same rate as the rotating magnetic field. And this means we won't get eddy currents. So the AC induction motor loses the least energy due to eddy currents. Although remember, it does lose a lot of energy when it's producing the three-phase power source in order to power the motor in the first place. Question 12. 
Which motor lasts the longest without maintenance? Is it the standard AC motor, the AC induction motor, the DC motor, or the universal motor? Now the lifetime of almost all of these motors is determined by the graphite brushes that are used to connect the commutator, or slip rings in the case of the standard AC motor, to the, uh, to the output power, or to the external circuit. The input power, rather. And this means that all of uh, these will have brushes that wear down over time. The single exception is the AC induction motor, which does not use brushes. So once again, that's our answer. The induction motor has no brushes in contact with the rotor, and so it will take much longer to wear down than the other motors. Question 13. What would be the best choice of motor for a pump which must operate continually? Well, if it has to operate continually, that means that it needs to be able to work for a long period of time without maintenance, right? So what's the best sort of motor for that? Well, it would probably be an induction motor. An induction motor takes a long time to wear out, and we can power it continuously. How about an electric clock? So a domestic low-powered device that simply ticks at a constant rate. Well, if we want something that ticks at a constant rate and we don't want to use up too much power and use an AC induction motor, then our best choice would be to use a standard AC motor because this has a power source which will never change its speed. How about a fan with different speeds? So we need to be able to run a motor at a slow speed or a fast speed. Well, an induction motor and an AC motor aren't really much good in this case because they'll always try and spin at the same rate. If we want to have a fan with different speeds, then what we should do is use a DC motor because by supplying different currents to a DC motor, we can have it spin at different speeds. The rate at which a DC motor spins is not dependent on the frequency of the power source in the same way that the other two ones are. Question 14. DC motors are not limited in speed by the frequency of their power source. Useful, right? Does this mean that a powered DC motor will just speed up forever? Justify your answer. Well, at first, it seems like that might be a reasonable thing to happen, but we also know that it can't be true. Because, of course, we never see uh, DC motors spinning at an infinite speed. So there must be something that stops it from speeding up. What is it? It's back EMF. Remember that? That didn't stop being a thing or anything. So a DC motor will not speed up indefinitely. When a DC motor is in operation, it will produce a back EMF with magnitude proportional to how quickly it's turning, right? Because the back EMF has a magnitude proportional to the uh, change in flux through the coil, or rather the rate of change of flux. That means that the faster the motor is turning, the more back EMF there is. So the increasing back EMF decreases the amount of torque acting on the coil. When, at one point, when the motor reaches a high enough speed, the back EMF will be equal to the supply voltage. That means that there will be no current flowing through the coil, and the motor will be unable to get any faster. Question 15. Can any motor powered by an AC power source uh, ever spin with a higher frequency than the frequency of the power source? Justify your answer. All right, so let's give this some thought. If we have an AC power source uh, and an AC motor with brushes, then the motor's coil has to spin at the same rate as the frequency of the power source. So, no good there. What if we have an AC induction motor? Well, in that case, we'll have uh, a varying AC current through each set of electromagnets that will pull the coil around at the same rate as the uh, rate at which the power source is changing within the electromagnets. So once again, that doesn't really help us. The electromagnets frequency changes with the same frequency as the power source. But there's one more motor we've learned about 
that can work with an AC power source. That's right, it's the universal motor. So a motor powered by AC can spin faster than its power source is alternating because a universal motor uses electromagnets to ensure the torque on the rotor is always in the same direction and can therefore operate like a DC motor. And that works even if the power source is changing, right? So even if we have an alternating power source, uh, we can have the universal motor act in the same way as a DC motor and end up spinning faster than the frequency of the power source. So that's the end of the questions, which means we're at the end of the module. In this section, we've learned about uh, various different sorts of electric motors and, for that matter, various sorts of electric generators. And we've compared them and looked at their uses in today's society.